welcome back to my channel this is auntie z chief cheerleader at shape of african encouraging you and me to eat healthy the african way you're absolutely welcome to the super family guys where we share healthy tips weight loss tips and how to eat to manage type 2 diabetes if you're new here consider hitting that subscribe button hit the notification bell so that you never miss a live video a video a cooking video or whatever video that i post um, on the channel just hit that button so you never miss out on it so guys in the previous live um, session i shared my top 10 fruits that are low on the glycemic index and have a low glycemic load if you haven't watched that video already i want to you know uh, ask you to consider going back and watching that video or to watch that thing about this life is not easy because no <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> anyways if you haven't watched that live video already please go back and watch it as i shared everything that you need to know with regards to glycemic index and glycemic load how it affects blood sugar how fruits that are high or low on the glycemic load affect blood sugar release in the body so in this video i want to share with you um, the amount of food or fruits that you can eat that you don't have to worry if it's going to spike blood sugar or not like i said the glycemic index just gives you a measure of you know how fast a food that contains carbohydrates is going to release its carbohydrates into the bloodstream but then we talked also about the glycemic load which talks about uh, the amount or which takes into consideration the portion size or the serving size of the fruits that you should eat so i mentioned that even though um some fruits are low on the glycemic uh, load or low on the glycemic index it doesn't mean that you have to just eat one whole watermelon especially if you're trying to lose weight and especially if you're trying to manage or even reverse type 2 diabetes you cannot eat as much as you want it is not an all you can eat something okay so there are specific portions or serving sizes of low glycemic fruits even vegetables that you can eat when you're trying to lose weight and you guys know portion control is key if you portion control right you're not going to only uh, help you know have a healthy body you're going to also you know uh, give your body the possibility to lose weight if weight loss is your goal or give your body the possibility to repair itself in the case of managing type 2 diabetes type 2 diabetes being a lifestyle disease so if you portion control your low glycemic index fr fruits very well what is going to happen is that you are going to most probably re reduce your a1c value that is the uh, the value for your blood sugar reduce it to the normal you know value in the long run and probably also reverse type 2 diabetes which i'm trying to do at this moment and it's also a good thing to know that you can if you want to lose weight or maybe manage your type 2 diabetes you must not you know uh, 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 forgo all those wonderful delicious healthy fruits that you have been eating like most people uh, or most uh, uh, people or some coaches or whatever on the internet let you know you don't have to eat this you don't have to eat that no you don't have to you must just completely uh, 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 you know take fruits out of your your diet which is not um, a good thing it is not um, a healthy advice so in this video i want to go ahead i have brought out my scale do you understand when you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to manage especially if you're trying to manage type 2 diabetes you want to start by using a scale because it is difficult to measure with your eyes the right serving size of even the lowest fruit uh, lowest glycemic fruit that you're about to eat it is difficult to use your eyes to measure so you want to start with a scale and as time goes on you are going to have an idea of what i don't know 100 grams of you know pineapple looks like you know when you have mastered that then with time you can keep the scale um at bay i know that so many of us we don't like to measure things we don't like to calculate calories so i'm, I'm even me i say i dare inside the matter i mean the pot of soup let me tell you this weight loss issue managing type 2 diabetes is not easy to come and add again weighing things you know counting calories and all of that so we don't want that but to start you have to start somewhere and you must start with a scale now we have talked about the low 
uh, glycemic load foods are foods that have a glycemic load of 0 to 10 or between 0 to 10. Any food that is has a glycemic load of between 0 to 10 is a low glycemic fruit or, or low glycemic food. We are talking about fruits today. So th th those are the foods that you want to focus on while eating. If you are um, focusing on glycemic index, any fruit with a glycemic index between 0 and 55 is a low glycemic index fruit you can consume now the question is how much of this food or these fruits can you consume this is what we're about to show you here now i'm going to go ahead and just turn this video so that you can see my setup right here there you go i hope you can see this clearly if you can see this clearly let me know that you can see it clearly so i'm going to go ahead and put on my scale just like so um first of all what am i going to do i want to show you first of all the lowest on the glycemic load which are the lines i mentioned in the previous video if you haven't seen that video click this link showing up right now to see that video to know what we're talking about so we said that lines have a glycemic index of 24 and a glycemic load of one so it's a very very good fruit it's a it's a citrus fruit rich in a lot of vitamins and minerals so let me now go ahead and weigh oh i think i should turn this around so that you can also see wait so if you can see that, can you guys see that? If you can see that, please let me know that you can see it. Can you see? Can anybody see? Okay. So we are going to go and weigh. So the serving size for limes is 120 grams. So this is lime with the skin. Obviously, it's going to weigh more. So to be able to, you know, get your 120 grams, you can just go ahead and measure it you see two of them is 143 grams 143 grams with skin on i've left the skin on because I've, i have the experience that when you peel the skin off you're going to have about 120 to 125 grams for two limes like this so this is the amount of limes that you should con con that you can or should consume at one meal to be able to keep your glycemic load or keep your blood sugar level on a healthy range okay maximum two limes like this and we're going to talk more about that so don't go away so for the limes just know that you should use about two limes with the skill uh, skin on if you peel the skin you're going to have about 120 grams or 125 grams maximum so the serving size is 120 grams trezor 120 grams that's my husband and the kids they're making noise for lemons it's the same thing 120 grams so i'm going to go ahead and measure this lemon i tried measuring a couple of lemons i couldn't have for exactly 125 grams so if you're measuring lemon one lemon should be about 125 grams so that when you peel the skin you're going to have about 120 grams so you see now if you put it in your your, your palm like this you're going to see that one serving of lemon should be just inside your palm. It shouldn't come towards your fingers like this. It should just be like in this spot. You see that? That's how you know that you have about a serving size of, of lime or lemon, sorry. Now, next, onto our oranges. I'm going to go ahead. I have already peeled this orange. The serving size for orange is also 120 grams. And let me go ahead and put that at zero. And now, this is an orange that has been peeled. If I put it in there, you have about 164 grams. You already see that one small orange, this is actually a small orange, this is not a big orange. One orange that has been peeled has 164 grams, which is already beyond 120 grams, which is the serving size that you should consume at one time. So generally, you are going to see people are going to take orange, uh, for a snack, they're going to take an orange, they're going to also take a banana, they'll add some lemons, or uh, sorry, some, some grapes to eat, and you are way beyond the serving size for managing your, your diabetes. Or you are way beyond the serving size for, you know, if you are trying to lose weight. That's why they always recommend that you eat just a fruit, about a cup, a handful like this, of a fruit, so that you remain within the serving size, serving size especially for the diabetic patients. So that's what that's with orange. Now, moving up to grapes. This is grape here. I'm just going to go ahead and measure grapes as well. 
put it at zero. This is a grapefruit. So look at one grapefruit is 260, uh, 69 grams. This is double the seven size, serving size, right? So you see that this is already two servings of the required amount that you should eat. Even though the fruit is a low glycemic load or is low on the glycemic load, this serving size for somebody particularly who has diabetes is already a lot. If you consume this, what's going to happen is that you are going to now, your, your sugar is, your blood sugar is going to rise much more. So you shouldn't be surprised that if you consume a fruit like this, maybe you made a juice or something, and then you measure your blood sugar using your blood sugar machine, don't be surprised that your blood sugar will be high because this grapefruit is double the serving size. So this is the reason why glycemic load, using the glycemic load is very important because it takes into consideration the serving size. I really wanted to make sure that I showed you what it looks like, what a serving size looks like, even for low glycemic load fruits. This is very important. So take note, if you were to eat a grapefruit as a snack and you are a diabetes patient, what you are going to do is you are going to divide this into two. Just like so that you can have about 120 grams for that meal. Even still, it's still 139, 140. But at least you are getting, you're close to 120 grams than 269, right? So this is it for grapefruits. Very important. Now, moving on, let us check um, apple. Let us check apple. Good afternoon. This is it. Apple is a hundred and yeah, a hundred. I thought I measured one hundred and twenty, but it's almost one hundred and twenty grams. And so this is just the serving size of an apple. With uh, if you are trying to you know manage your blood sugar, if you are a diabetic patient, this is a, the serving size of apple you should eat at one point in time. What that means is this. I want you guys to understand the concept. What this means is that if you were to have this apple for a snack, which is the right serving size, and it is a low glycemic load fruit, it's good. You have checked those two points. One, you have checked that it is a low glycemic load fru fruit. Number two, you have measured it and you have found out that it is the right serving size, 120 grams. Then you can eat this apple as a snack. And then check after two hours to see your blood sugar. You're going to realize that your blood sugar would have no reason. If you, of course, your blood sugar, when you eat, when you bite into an apple or any fruit or vegetable, one bite, it's at about 15 minutes later, you're going to be able to see a change in blood sugar or not if you use the blood sugar uh, machine to measure your blood sugar. So if you eat a low glycemic fruit like uh, uh, um, uh, 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 apple, in the right portion size and after about 15 20 30 minutes an hour you measure your blood sugar you're going to see that your blood sugar would have risen yes but not much why because we mentioned that low glycemic load fruits do not spike blood sugar or they release their blood sugar slowly so this is the right size and you see how small this apple is it actually feels just the inside palm of my hands this is very important so it is true that different people metabolize sugar or food in different ways so it means that I might zip and Z might eat an apple and it might raise my blood sugar by maybe two three four five points and someone else may eat the same apple and it raise their blood sugar by maybe just two or three points so this depends generally it goes to say that um, the blood sugar rise is, is not going to be so uh, fast and it's not going to be so much. It may vary from person to person because maybe some person is more physically acti active or somebody's metabolism is different. But generally, this apple is not going to spike blood sugar because, because it's a low glycemic index fruit. Okay? Moving on. Let me show you the other ones that are there. Let me put this thing on again. Moving on, what have I shown you? Okay, watermelon or grapes. Let's go with grapes. Let me just take this out of my 
of the this thing so I can measure. Again, the serving size is 120 grams. So let's go ahead and bring that to zero and measure this. So we are at 120 grams. So this is the serving size for grapes. If you are trying to manage your, your sugar levels or you want to even lose weight. We are not going to be talking about calories in this video because it's not very important. It's not necessary. We are going to talk about calories in foods in another one. But this is the serving size and you are going to notice that it just fills your hand, your palm. So if you don't have a scale at home and you are trying to measure grapes, just measure it like this, one handful. This is what you're going to get. It's going to be approximately 120 grams. Okay, I'll just go ahead and put this here so that I have space. Then next, let's do the same thing with strawberries. 120 grams as well. Let's go ahead and measure that. And we are going to see that we have about 120 grams as well. So this is 122, but it's just about the same thing, yes? So if I put it in my palms again, you are going to see that it's just the same thing. So if you don't have a scale again, just fill your palms with the strawberries and enjoy it. Let's talk about coconut. We also mentioned coconut as a low glycemic index food. Again, uh, the serving size for coconut is 100 grams. 100 grams, okay? That one changes. So if I go ahead and put it here at zero, let's go ahead and weigh that coconut. And we are going to be at 101 grams, which is okay. This is the serving size for coconut. If you want to consume coconuts, not one full coconut, eh? Not one full coconut with gari. Do you understand? You say you are snacking. One full coconut with gari, with granite, with avocado, pear. Do you understand? You add sugar on top. You put milo, you add milk and all of that. You will be way, way, way beyond. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, now we will go ahead and check the last ones before uh, we finish this session. Um, this is mango. Mango is 120 grams as well. And we have to go ahead and measure it so that you see you are going to have here more, obviously. It's, this is about 150 grams. Remember, we said that mango has a glycemic load of 8. Okay? This is 150 grams. So it tells you that this is a little bit more than you should. You should consume to be on the safe side what i like to do is i just get a um a, a full mango i cut it into half like that and i eat just the half size just to be on the safe side because it's difficult to measure 100 grams and i don't measure all the time with the scale so i just use this if in, 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 in case i really want to eat mango so what i do is i peel the mango slice it into two halves like this and eat one half so although it is not going to be 120 grams, it's going to be less, but I know that I'm on the safer side. Yes? Okay. Now, let's talk about the banana. Banana, obviously, with the skin, is going to weigh more. If I weigh that, you have 126 grams of banana. So if I took out the skin, oh, it's down here. If I remove the skin, we want to get a serving size of 120 grams on the scale because it's not too clean. So I'll just go ahead and put it there. So you are now here, you are about 100, and, uh, sorry, you are at 88 grams of banana. So one small banana like this is about 88 grams. So you, 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 you may eat one and a half small bananas, okay? One and a half small bananas. And the blueberries, I think, I've, have I measured the blueberries? I don't think so. Blueberries, I've not measured. So it's 120 grams as well. Oh, come back here. Come back here. Come back here. Yeah, 122. If I were to measure the blueberries, just like the strawberries, it's going to fill my palm. Of course, it's going to be a little bit more because they are smaller. So you see, you can just use a, a palm full like this and you are good to go. Just as a snack, okay? Not mixed with any other foods. Very, very important. Let's do the pineapple. 120 grams as well. Let's measure it, 120 grams. That's your serving size. So it's also about a palm full. Okay, thanks for the, yes. What if you want to make a smoothie? We are going to do that on a complete separate video, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Give me a minute and I'm coming. So 120 grams for pineapple as well. And 
Last but certainly not least, you have the watermelon, which is also supposed to be 120 grams for serving size. My watermelon was not so good. I'm so annoyed with that big watermelon. So you have 120 grams, which is also about a palm size, okay, for the watermelon as well. Now, I mentioned papo, and I said that papo, many people feel that it's because it's not as sweet. It is, it is a low glycemic fruit. It is not. Papo is actually a high glycemic fruit, okay? Let me say medium to high because it has a glycemic load of 17. So generally the selling size for fruits would always be about 120. So if I were to eat 120 grams of papo with a glycemic load of 17, I will, I will spike my blood sugar. So this is what? 175 grams. If I were to take one out, let me say this one. That let me call that 120 grams of papo. Then if I consume just this small papo slice, look at this. That fits my arm. Or it is going to spike my blood sugar because it is a medium to almost high blood sugar uh, uh, glycemic fruit. So the only way that I can consume this papo is to cut this papo into two and into two pieces. And you and I know that it is difficult to eat this kind of small amount of papo, right? Just this. It's difficult. So, well, what you can do, with, either you are going to eat only this if hungry papo did do you, or you are going to eat this kind of slices every after like two hours. So you eat it and you wait two hours that your blood sugar comes down and then you eat it again and again and again, which does not really make sense to me, yeah? Okay, you just have to finally get to a point where your blood sugar or your your body your metabolism you have lost weight in the case of type 2 diabetes you have lost weight such that your blood sugar um, has leveled and is functioning properly again and you can consume many more fruits that you desire so somebody asked the question to know um what if you want to make a smoothie now if you're trying to manage type 2 diabetes to make a smoothie with type 2 diabetes is not a place something especially if you're your body is really not working well. The only way that I make smoothies, but I make smoothies with a lot of vegetables. In the last video, and if you, can, if you check this link, I'm going to add the link, I talked about low glycemic vegetables, which are mostly dark leafy greens. Okay, they have a very low glycemic index or low glycemic load. So you have to use three portions of vegetables and just maybe one portion of a fruit like pineapple, or better still, strawberries, which have a very, very low glycemic index of just one. Saying, meaning that it's not going to even spike your blood sugar at all. So it means that what? Uh, the best fruits that you can consume with the extra, are the fruits with the extremely low glycemic index with one up to about three. Those fruits, although the recommended serving size is 120 for, for example, strawberries, you can actually eat 240 grams. That means twice as much of this quantity. You can now use twice as much to make your fruit. Or you can combine two very, very low glycemic index fruits with some vegetables to make a smoothie. Does that make sense? So it means that I have a, 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 a fruit with a low glycemic index or low gly glycemic load like strawberries, which is just one. And then I decide to take 120 grams of this and another uh, fruit with a very, very low glycemic index, let me think about it, grapefruit of like three, you see? I combine those two, you have one plus three is going to give you four. The most important thing is to, for you not to exceed 10, okay? It's very important. So if you, you can combine it, you can combine strawberries with blueberries, some spinach, do you understand? And you can add coconut milk, do you understand, to make your smoothie. If you want, I might show you some of the recipes that I use to make smoothies or to make my drinks. You know, when I, I really want to have something sweet in the morning and I don't have time, I just want to get something for the go. Then I combine very low glycemic index fruits and vegetables to make my smoothies. Okay, bananas are also a great option. Although they have a glycemic index, the glycemic index or glycemic load is a little bit higher but you have to know how you're going to combine it, okay? It's just knowing what to combine with what. It's just also knowing which fruits 
are very low on the glycemic index which ones are very high so that you know how to combine both of them so guys that's it for this video i hope that you found value if you found value please share this video on your social media platforms tell your friends about shape of african tv and i'm going to be coming live every fridays i remember last week i said on saturdays but on saturdays it's really difficult so i'm going to try as much as possible to come live on fridays to share african food and nutrition information knowledge like this one and also uh, recommend uh, videos what do you want me to talk about what kind of foods do you want me to talk about are they african foods you want to know more about or maybe their calorie intake or whatever you want to know about as re with regards to african food and nutrition and tz is always there to share the knowledge that i'm receiving from school with you all um on this platform because of course we are a family now we are the super family thank you so much if you haven't done so already make sure you hit that subscribe button and i'm going to see you guys in the next one bye